everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. So in today's video we're going to be talking the upcoming Wheel of Time TV show and of course the 10 things that I am the most excited to see adapted within the show. Just before we get started with this I want to let you guys know this will be very much a more podcasty type video. I'm going to be doing a lot more just talking and not as much scripted stuff. I want to give you some of my opinions, kind of the raw opinion. So it won't be quite as edited as normal, and it won't be quite as scripted as normal. So hopefully, if you guys like that format, maybe I'll do a little bit more of that. Or if you just want me to go back to scripting stuff, then I'll do that too. Uh, before we get into the video, though, I do want to thank Audible.com for being my biggest supporter on the channel. Uh, Audible.com is the largest supplier of audiobooks in the world. Uh, you can get a free audiobook they are offering to my viewers. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You'll get a free book. You can check it out. I've been getting a lot of comments in the Discord and actually even on YouTube asking about audiobooks and whether they're worth it. I highly recommend them. I listen to them all the time. It's great for me. Um, I don't necessarily have to do a reread, but I do a lot of driving. So I'll pop it on in the car and I'll listen to the audiobooks as I'm driving and it gives me ideas for new videos. It helps me research, and I just like listening to the books again. So I highly recommend it. If you want to check it out, head to that link. Let me know what you think. You support the channel by doing it. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red all the way through A Memory of Light. So be careful watching the video, guys. Most of you know that by now, but there are some of you that are still reading. I am going to spoil stuff, so uh, you've been warned. So... This video, I want to specify what I am going to talk about and what I'm not going to talk about. What I'm not going to talk about necessarily are things that I'm excited to see how they're going to adapt it necessarily. Like, I'm not going to say, are they going to combine characters? I'm not. Gonna... Those aren't things I'm going to address in this video. What I'm going to address are the things from the books that I'm the most excited to see on screen. One of the reasons I'm so darn excited for the show is that all this stuff that I've read for years and I've got my own mental images of how they look... I'm excited to see that in a visual medium. I'm a visual person. I'm excited to see some of that stuff. So what I want to hit on today, in no particular order, are my top 10 things that I am excited to see in the Wheel of Time TV show. So let's kick it off with my number one choice. Number one, seeing the cities. So this sounds like a weird one to folks, but I am super excited to see some of the cities and just the size of them, the scale of them. Like I said, I'm a visual person. When I first heard about Camelin and the size of it, or even Bearlawn for that matter, my interest was piqued. I love huge things. I wanted to see these massive cities that are sprawling and in a world that's alive. So for me, I'm super excited to see those cities. Again, Tarvalin and the way the architecture, the, the White Tower itself, like some of the buildings, like... That stuff to me is super exciting, and so it's one of the things I'm most excited to see. When I first even read about Emmons Field, I assumed Emmons Field was like three buildings. Uh, later on, I realized it was a large city. It's a large town. It has a bunch of different buildings and alleys, and it may not be huge, but my rereads told me it was bigger than I thought. So that type of stuff I'm excited to see. Number two, Flashes of the Age of Legends. So we're not going to see, I don't expect us to see large flashbacks, long-term spent in the Age of Legends, but I am excited to see flashbacks. I'm excited to see some of the stuff that went down. I know when we see Rand go through the way back to Rangrial, we're going to see that stuff. So I'm really, really excited to see the Age of Legends, see a visual medium put to that. We don't really have any good pictures of it. We don't have any good real ideas of it or any real lore behind what we know uh, from the books. So I'm excited to see more of that put into it. Uh, I want to see Perrin Deeson. I want to see the Hall of Servants. I want to see our Forsaken characters back then. I want to see Luz Theron. So to me, the Age of Legends is going to be super important. I, I would even, I know it's not going to happen. I would love to see an Age of Legends spinoff TV show just to see more about it because I was always so fascinated with it. Number three, channeling battles. Now this ties in to one of the topics I've had in another video about how they're going to portray or how they're going to show channeling. But really what I also want to see then are channeling battles. The one that comes to mind is Nynaeve versus Magedion in Terabon uh, and the way that it looks like they're just standing there. But in reality, they're weaving back and forth and splicing weaves. And I'm excited to see that stuff. Magic battles um, are fun, and I think it can be even more fun in the Wheel of Time if they choose to do it well. 
So I'm super excited to see that. I'm excited to see how they portray cutting somebody off from the source. Like, what does a shield look like? I want to see how channeling is shown in general. So that stuff's really exciting for me. I don't know if it is for you all, but I really want to see that. Number four, Varen. So anything and everything Varen Mathwin, I want to see. So my favorite character list, you guys all saw that video I made a, a while back. If you haven't seen that, check out my video on my favorite characters or the best characters within the series. That wasn't necessarily just a list of my favorites, but Varen, uh, I love her. I love everything about Varen. I think she's one of the more complex characters. She's a minor character, which is maybe why she doesn't get quite as much of a, an oomph uh, as some of the other big characters do. But I just love who she is, how she goes about things, the mysterious nature behind her. And then her big reveal in uh, A Gathering Storm where she comes out as being Black Aja and being a mole the whole time. I love it. She's one of my favorites. I'm so excited to see how they adapt her how they show her mysterious nature, whether they keep her ambiguous throughout, and whether they drop little hints about what's to come. I'm excited for all of that. I'm excited for who they cast for her. I've got ideas in my head, like my fan casting stuff. I don't think they're gonna cast any of these people, but I would love to see, like for instance, Kathy Bates to me in my head makes a great Varen, cause she, she's just a great actress, but who knows? I would love to see that, and I'm super excited to see Varen in general. Number five, big landmarks. So this kind of ties in with the big cities. Like I'm excited to see those huge cities, these big architecture, the, the stuff like that. But I'm also excited to see some of the landmarks. White Bridge, Dragon Mount, Sheogul, Tarwin's Gap, the Tower of Genjai, Shadar Logoth. These are areas that I'm super excited to see portrayed. Visual mediums, putting a visual to that is what I'm most excited about the series. So for me, seeing some of that stuff, the first time we see it, like when they come across Whitebridge and they see it in the distance and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it doesn't look like it should even be able to support weight, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see the Tower of Genjai and how weird it looks to these people and how out of place it feels. Even. I'm excited to see Shadar Logoth, this ancient ruin of a city that just reeks of evil. I'm excited for that stuff. Big landmarks are going to be something just like the cities that I'm kind of excited to see. I want to see Dragon Mount towering over everything because the way it's described in the books, it's like Mount Everest size with no mountains around it. Uh, it's essentially like four or five miles high and nothing around it, which would be a weird sight to see. So I want it to feel out. Number six, Villains we love to hate. So with the villains, I'm really excited to see just how evil they can make them. I want them to be not one-dimensional evil, so I want our villains to have multiple, like I want to understand their motivations, even if those motivations don't make sense. I want to know why they did what they did. I want them to be multiple dimensional, I guess let's put it that way. But at the same time, I want to hate them. Like I want to love them because I hate them. Uh, in a very similar way, Game of Thrones did this well where it made us dislike some of the characters, but yet we were super interested in seeing what they did. I want that out of our characters. So Patton Fane, I, I want him to be horrible. Um, he needs to be straight up horrible, evil, doing nasty things, making an impact, because that makes his character more impactful. It makes the decisions that our main characters have to face more impactful. I want to see Lanfear be devious. I want to see her being jealous and all those things. I, I want to hate her and love her at the same time. Uh, I feel the same way about Demon Dread and Samael. And if they don't have an impact, then they're just a one-off villain that we don't care about. So I want to care about them, but I want to hate them, if that makes sense. Now, the good news is Wheel of Time has a lot of pretty hateable villains. One of my favorite hateable villains is Grendel. I love her hedonism. I love the way she approaches things. I love how intelligent she is. I love how she can pick apart a situation and understand the sides of it better than really we see any of the other Forsaken do. She seems to understand innately the way people work, their motivations, and kind of how to manipulate them. I always loved her. I loved the ending she got. I think she did really well in the last battle. So I loved her as a character. So again, just an example of a villain that I love to hate. Number seven, character moments. So again, one of the biggest things that sets some of these shows apart when they adapt them is how well they can give depth to the characters. The danger in making an action style, epic fantasy thriller type show is that it's all action and no substance. Again, I'm going to hark back to, to Game of Thrones and what they did to make it successful. They had a lot of one-on-one -on -one 
character moments within that first season that really set the tone for us caring about these characters and understanding who they are. One that comes to mind in Game of Thrones was when Cersei met with Robert and they talked about their past and how they might have worked, but they didn't. Like it gave another side to Cersei other than just being an evil, nasty villain lady or Robert just being a drunken king who has kind of given up. Uh, it gave more depth to those characters. It made us care about them. I, I want to see those moments because they're all over the Wheel of Time. There's a couple that come to mind here, but one of the more touching ones happens later in the series. I've talked about it a number of times. Nynaeve trying to get support, rallying support for Lan as he rides towards Tyrone Gap. I, I'm super excited for that. I, that. That part gives me goosebumps. There's other parts uh, throughout the books like when Elaine and Avienda become first sisters. There's times when Min comforts Rand. One of my favorite ones is when Fael and Perrin, when she they have that conversation after Perrin realizes his family is gone and she forces him to face it and deal with it rather than trying to, you know, push it away. Those are emotional moments just from reading it. So I imagine that it can be even more emotional and powerful on screen. So I'm very excited for that. Number eight. Dumai's Wells. If you haven't seen my other videos, I love Dumai's Wells. I just think it's such a turning point moment in the books. I love the fact that we go from having war being, I don't want to call it tame to this point, but being absolutely brutal. And it just changes all of the characters. Dumai's Wells is a turning point in the books. It's such a powerful turning point. I'm so excited to see it. To me, to make a good comparison to Game of Thrones, to me, this could be a Red Wedding type moment. It should be that powerful. So I'm very, very excited to see Dumai's Wells on screen. But that being said, I will not be very excited if they choose to PG it down. I want it to be gruesome. I want it to be horrible. I want it to feel disgusting. I want to see Perrin throwing up like he does. I want to see people's bodies explode. Why? Not because I like watching that stuff. More actually because I don't. I want to see that because I want it to be that impactful. It needs to have that emotional boom. Really hit you as a, uh, while you watch. And that's what The Red Wedding did. Yes, it was a surprise, but more so, it was how they did it. That wouldn't have been as awful had we just found out that all of those characters from Game of Thrones died. It was how they died that really made it worse. So that's what I want to see in Dumai's Wells. I want to see it impactful. Number nine. The World of Dreams. So my last video, we talked about the best Dreamwalkers or two videos ago. I'm excited to see how they adapt the World of Dreams. I think it's a vital part to the, the mythos of the world, to the magic system of the world. I want it to be a vital part of the show, a vital part of the story. And I really can't wait to see how they differentiate the World of Dreams from, you know, the, the real world. How does it look different? Is it kind of an off-tinted shade? They can basically take the hue off a little bit. Uh, again, if you want to see an example of this where it makes a difference, go watch the movie The Matrix. Uh, you may never have noticed this before, but when they're in The Matrix, there's a greenish hue to the entire thing. Like they've got it set with a green overlay, so it shows them being in a computer world. But then when they're in the real world, the colors are a lot more dull. There's no greenish overlay. It's an example that they use to show when you're in the real world as opposed to the fake world. I want to see that with the World of Dreams. So I'm excited to see how they adapt that. Number 10, the huge battles. So yes, Dumai's Wells is a part of these, but guys, the battles in Wheel of Time are massive in scope. Really bigger than any other fantasy novel. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, none of these film adaptations have battles that are even remotely the size of some of the battles that happen in the Wheel of Time. The last battle itself should be an epic season worth of happenings. I mean, just nuts, the scope and scale and the numbers of people involved. I'm pumped to watch it. The first real battle that we get in the show should be the battle at Tarwin's Gap at the end of the Eye of the World, so that could be the first season. So I'm pumped to see that. I don't know how much of that battle we'll see, but the Battle of the Two Rivers, obviously Dumai's Wells, as I've already mentioned, the battle in Kyrian, all of those things I'm super pumped for. Not that I'm necessarily a battle person, but those battles can lend impact to the series. They can be kind of focal moments that make it very uh, visual to watch. Those battle scenes, while they can't be the whole show, should be a part of it, and I'm excited to see it. So guys, those are my top 10 things that I'm excited to see in the upcoming show. 
What are yours? Please let me know in the comments below. I want to list out what are your top 10? Why are they your top 10? I'd love to respond to some of those comments. If you're not in my Discord server, check out my Patreon page to figure out how to get in it. Uh, it's free. You don't have to do anything, but check that out so you can get in there and you can talk about it with me there. Guys, if you like the video, please like it as it helps the channel get exposed, I guess, in the YouTube algorithm. And definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what I'm doing in terms of Wheel of Time content. Here on this channel, it's Wheel of Time all the time. And then also check out my Patreon page if you want to support what I'm doing here, if you want to support the channel's growth. Really the goal here, as I've said before, I want to grow the Wheel of Time fan base any way I can do that. If you can get behind that mission and you want to support what I'm doing, I would very much welcome it. Thank you so much for all of you who already do. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?